I'd rather not think we like to serve the internet. And we usually serve the internet because there isn't that much better things to do. And every once in a while, we stop and we see a question that is going viral. And as someone who's already running low on video ideas, I don't take this opportunity and just simply pass it. I have to make a video on it, and this is why I'm making this video today of the crocodile and zebra problem, or whatever the problem is actually called. A little bit background to um, what the, the question is from and stuff. It was from a Scotland examination board, I believe, SQA, um, and it was an exam for higher mathematics. It was the last question, and it was a question that it was apparently so hard that everybody go, went in tears and, um, and the pass mark had to be lowered and all those type of stuff. Now what's the question even about? It was about a crocodile um, who was stalking its, its prey, which is a zebra. Um, it gave an equation of the crocodile um, with how long it would take from it to reach the zebra depending on how far up the stream it swims up to. If it swims closer, it's going to take this same amount of time. If it swims all the way there, across, it will take this amount of time. And there is an equation for it. And basically the first bit asks how long it would take the crocodile to travel not on land at all. So basically just travels in water. How long, how long the time would be if it travels the shortest distance in water. And then I believe part B is the one that might be confusing a lot of people. It's asking the least amount of time it would take the crocodile to get to the zebra, what the value of x is, which is how far up the, um, the land, how close the crocodile ends up with at the zebra when it gets out of the water. And we're going to try to solve the whole three questions today. Before you even start, we can look at the actual equation, whether the equation is actually made up or it actually makes sense. And in this case, surprisingly, it does make some sense. So here's my setup of the actual question. Um, crocodile, zebra, in case you couldn't tell, which I probably couldn't tell if someone else drew this. Um, but basically, here's the equation of the um, time would, that would be taken, basically. Um, there's two parts to it, in case you haven't seen. There is this part, and there is this part. Now this part represents the time, the um, speed, that it would take the crocodile traveling in water. This part would take it when it travels in land. Its path would be, it would go from here, um, it would go across the water, up to land, and then it would continue its path on land. So basically, this distance in the water, this distance is going to be x. The rest of this is going to be 20 minus the x that it's already traveled. So it's going to be 20 minus x. I bumped into the camera, sorry about that. It's going to be 20 minus x, which is this bit right there. And the 4, the 4 is kind of its speed on land. Really, its speed will be 0 0.4, but they made it 4 so that it would be a tenth of a second. What about this bit? Now, this bit, the 5 is obviously going to be the um, speed in water. This is the distance traveled in water, because as you can see, this is going to be like Pythagoras' theorem. If I redraw this little bit out here, if I just simply draw this little bit out here, um, there's going to be this. This is the actual distance it traveled. This is the distance x that it traveled across this way, and this is going to be how long it is. So I'm going to call this the, um, I don't know, let's give it a, a wacky letter. This D for distance traveled, maybe. Um, so we can have this unknown side, which I'm going to tell you is 6, because it's 36 here. 36 square root is going to be 6. So Pythagoras' theorem says this side squared plus this side squared will equal to the hypotenuse squared. So um, x squared plus 6 squared would equal d squared. This is Pythagoras. Pythagoras. Mr. Pythagoras, you, are, you can watch a wrap of again. Um, and then d, which is this distance, would just simply equal to the square root of x squared plus 36. Because 6 squared is 36. And that's basically where that equation, that bit come from. So the equation does make sense in a way. So at first, we have to calculate the time taken if the crocodile does not travel on land. I just, just said that, like, absolutely from what the question said. So if it didn't travel on land at all, that means it's just going to go from where it starts 
all the way to the zebra in the water, so that it's just going to travel in that diagonal path in the stream or whatever thing is. It's a river, isn't it? Yeah, it's a river. So that means x is going to equal 20 meters because it ends up 20 meters away from where it is, which is basically where the zebra is. So all there is is you just have to plug x equals 20. So you put 20 into x, um, solve the whole pretty much the whole equation, see what the answer you get. Your answer will be 104.4, but this is not in seconds, you see, because if you read the question carefully, it says that the answer given will be in a tenth of a second. So that means you have to divide it by 10, because 10 units of whatever you get will equal one second. So basically, crocodile took 10.44 seconds if it only travels in water. Now, when it simply travels straight without um, going in the water, that means crocodiles just simply can travel there Boom, there, across to there. That's the minimal distance it's going to travel in the water. So that means it's then it's just going to travel all the rest of the 20 meters across like that. So that means x would equal zero in the second case. There's the first case. And the second case, um, t would equal zero. t if zero. That would be 536 plus zero squared plus four twenty minus zero. Plugged it all in the calculator, you would get 110 which represents 11 seconds. Now here's the eight mark bit. This is the hard bit. Because between these two x values, so between zero and 20 meters, there is a value where the time taken would be minimal. And it's your job to find it. Now you can call two of your great friends for this one, um, Sir Isaac Newton and Leibniz, or however you pronounce his name, because I'm not that sure. And we're going to be using a bit of calculus. Because you see, when you graph this out, the curve will have a minimum point. And if you're doing calculus already, or even if you haven't done calculus, at the very minimum point, the gradient is zero. Because if you draw a tangent line across it, it's going to be straight, flat, horizontal. So that means you just have to basically find that point where the gradient equals zero and then you should be fine. So how would we find a gradient of an equation of graph? We differentiate. So we've got um, the equation of t expressed here. And so we want, to, we want to, we agree that we have to derive it. So obviously we can't derive, you know, square roots. It's a bit harder, so we'll change it into a power of something. And square roots conveniently changes to a power of half. So I'll rewrite this in turn as 5 times 36 plus x squared to a power of a half plus um, the other one could just stay normally. Right. So there's two bits on there because both of these are added. So we just simply derive each terms and then we should come up with you know the actual answer. So to derive this, I write the symbol t prime x, which simply just means the derivative of this thing with respect to x, which I'm just going to rewrite that as um, d of tx with respect to x. It's like y. It's like having this as y, but it's t to the t function of x. So obviously we use have to use the chain rule for this one. So We'll just look at this first. What does the chain rule say? So the chain rule says we have to derive the outside. So I will let the inside here. So I'll say this bit equals u. So when we derive it, we derive this thing with respect of u, change this whole thing to u, 5 u, 5 times u to the power of half, and then du, du dx as we've seen in our chain rule video. But to just apply it, we just simply go 5, um, actually it's not 5 because it's five times a half when we derive. Um, so it's going to be a half times five, so five halves, times this whole thing. Um, that's half. And this whole thing, so 36 plus x squared. And the power would be subtracted by one. So a half minus one is minus a half. And then we times the derivative of inside, 36, um, derivative of 36, zero. Derivative of x squared, 2x. We even did limit to prove that. So now we just go to the next one, plus this next bit. Again, this bit in the back bracket would be u. So the derivative of 4u 
it's just going to be 4. Then we have to derive whatever is inside the bracket. To derive the derivative of 20, there it would just simply give you nothing. Minus x, the derivative of minus x gives you minus 1. Right there, so that's why you have minus 1. My um, battery kind of died as soon as I set that side to be doing that part. But whatever. Um, then we have this expression for um, derivative is t prime x or whatever you call it. We can simplify this. Um, we know that um, anything to the power of a half would give you a square root and anything to the power of minus means it would go on the denominator. So we can rewrite that as 5 times 2x because these both would be still on top. So 5 times 2 is 10 so it's going to be 10x um, divided by um, 2. 2 is already on the bottom this is going to be square root because it's a half and minus one because it makes it on the bottom. So it's going to be 36 plus x squared like that. Um, four times minus one is minus four. So it's going to have a minus four at the end of it. Now we've already kind of agreed that the um, minimum point would be when the gradient is zero. This is going to be the um, function of the gradient. Um, let me just write that down so you guys kind of know this is the gradient at any point of x when you actually graph it out. So we just simply have to let this whole bit equal zero and then we should be fine. So I'm gonna do that. We're gonna let this whole bit equal zero like that. So I mean, right. And then all we can do, we can add four to both sides. Um, so we'll get, well, I'll put this on the left-hand side because conventions, and I like it that way, be 10x um, divided by 236 plus x squared. Um, equals 4. Now what? Now um, we could uh, multiply both sides by this whole bit. This is asking, yeah. So it's going to be 10x um, equals 4 times 2 because we're bringing 2 there. So it's going to be 8 times the square root of 36 plus x squared, like that. Um, what can we do? There's a square root. I don't really like square root, so I'm going to multiply everything. I'm actually not going to multiply everything. I'm going to square um, everything on both sides. So I'm going to square everything. Right. So 10 squared is 100. Um, let me just use a different color pen because why not? 10 squared is 100. Um, x squared is, well, x squared. Um, and then we just say equal. 8 squared is 64. Anything square root, square root squared is going to be whatever is just in there. So it can just have 36 plus x squared. Now we're going to simplify this and we can actually almost solve it. So I'm going to simplify that now um, by going, multiplying this bit out. So 64 times 36 is 2,304. I worked that out earlier. And 64x squared, yeah, so let's try that. So 100x squared equals um, 2,304 plus 64 squared, x squared. I'll move all the x to one side um, so, I'm just going to get 36x squared equals 2304 and divide both sides by um, 36, divide both sides by 36 to get rid of our 36. And we're going to get x squared equals 64, therefore x equals plus or minus 8. However, um, we're more concerned with the plus 8 because minus 8 doesn't fall into our range between 0 and 20, um, which the question states. And clearly, it takes much longer if... Um, oops, where is the, where's the thing? It takes much longer if the crocodile had to move um, back 8 meters so x equals minus 8 and then move forward 28 meters obviously that's going to take much longer therefore um, our answer would just be plus 8. so now we've shown that the minimum point the point where it would take the crocodile minimal time is when x equals 8 which means it travel across 8 meters and then it travels 12 more meters on land to get to its prey but we're not done there because they want the value x and then they also want the minimum time. So that means we have to plug x right back into the original equation which gives you how long it takes. And what do we get? t of 8 would equal 5 um, square root of 36 plus 8 squared um, plus 4 um, of 20 minus 8. Now you can plug this whole thing in the calculator, so you'll get 98, but once again, 98 isn't the time. It's a tenth 
how it's 98 tenths of a second so that means that goes down to 9.8 seconds Woo! and yeah guys that is the end of my little video explanation on the uh, crocodile zebra maths problem that's gone viral whether it's hard or not you can decide but for now, I'm going to send fate back and I'm just going to go surf the internet again. And thank you very much for watching my video and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye. And also, this is kind of the first occasion that's actually appropriate for me to wear the um, Scotland shirt. I just have it and I always wear it. There's no actual reason why I do that. <laughs>